First of all, explain yes. this tour. All right. The Bible teaches that for those who know the Lord, who are saved, there's going to be what is called the rapture. That's when we go up in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52, that's 187 trillion billion miles and 11 one-hundredths of a second. That's what General Electric says the twinkling of an eye is, 11 one-hundredths of a second. What a trip it's going to be. And we won't be paying $200,000. It's free because... For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, in Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. So we're going up soon. It's described in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 18. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, with the dead, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So many people say, oh, that all scares me. Why? The greatest thing about the rapture is Revelation 22, 4. They shall see his face, the blessed, glorious face of the Lord Jesus Christ, our God and Savior. Now, after that comes the seven-year period of tribulation. We know it's seven years because it's called one Shabuah, one heptad in Greek, and that is Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. So, a tribulation hour recorded in Revelation chapter 6 to 18 is a period of seven years. During that period of time, we, the bride of Christ, for that's what believers are, are married to the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, recorded in Revelation 19, verse 7. Let us rejoice and be glad and give honor unto him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife, the bride of Christ, the church, hath made herself ready. Then we come back to earth for the honeymoon with our Lord. The Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. They had no way of saying millions, billions, trillions, quadrillions in those days. So he said tens of thousands, and we come back to set up the kingdom with him. He comes on that white horse in Revelation 19, 11, the armies in heaven, believers. Now the bride of Christ return with him, and he sets up that kingdom for 1,000 years, and that, of course, is Revelation 20, verse 4. He's recommissioned, 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 28. And then we reign with him on earth forever and forever and forever because don't believe a word of what you hear that the world's going to end in 2012. Uh, it just isn't so. This world will go on forever and forever with us, ruling with Christ. And that is when... The transference has taken place, and we read in Revelation 11:15, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and forever and forever. So the world will never end. It's a world without end, Isaiah 45, 17, and Ephesians 3, 21. Amen. Sleep well tonight. <laughs> oh, Jack, that's so wonderful to know that we can look forward to the rapture where Jesus has come up hither. And, you know, I was going to ask Jack a question. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, I almost said that the rapture is free. The rapture is not free. Jesus paid the price so that we can know that when he says, come up hither, we can go up to be with Amen. him, Jack, Amen. because of Calvary, Amen. accepting him That's as our great, Savior. That's great, Rexella. Oh, how wonderful to know. And you know, friends, Jesus did pay the price. It absolutely amazes me that more ministers are not excited about this and speaking about this in their churches, encouraging people. The price was paid. When Jesus says, come up, you can go. It amazes me more ministers are not speaking about it, Jack. It's a crime because there are 10,385 verses in the Bible on the subject of Christ's return. In other words, if you were to preach 100 verses per week, you would have enough material to discuss the second coming for two solid years with entirely different verses each week. There are 1,000 signs. That means if you just took 10 signs per week, you'd have, again, two years of material just to say that Jesus is coming. But you see, a lot of men won't study. I've got 100,000 hours of study. I've read now 12,000 volumes. I've memorized 15,000 verses. And 
I can't get enough. I put in 50 hours a week. I read 100 periodicals. I get articles from around the world and give them to you. I know what's going on, but some of these birds won't even read a newspaper. They'll not do anything. They make a little Saturday night special for which they spent uh, maybe half hour, an hour, and they don't know what they're talking about. And they remind me of the trip Columbus took when he left Spain for America. When he left Spain, he didn't know where he was going. When he got to America, he didn't know where he was. When he got home, he didn't know where he'd been. That's the three-point sermon of a lot of these preachers. Right. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman. That means not to be ashamed, 2 Timothy 2.15. Now, get this, please. Many of these ministers are backslidden. They're away from God. They don't want to see Jesus. And so they leave the subject alone. Though the book is full of it, one out of every four verses, you'd have to preach on the coming of the Lord once a month if you just followed the pattern of Scripture. All right. Is it possible that they fulfill 2 Peter 3, 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers who walking after their own lust say, oh, where is the promise of his coming? That's right. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 12, that there shall be iniquity abounding in the land, and many become cold, including our preachers. How about Revelation 3, verses 15 to 17? The Laodicean backslidden preachers in the churches of America, they don't want Jesus to come. He said, I know your works, that you're neither cold nor hot. I would you were cold or hot. So then, because you're lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Now, that is the word emio in Greek, and it if I say it nicely, it's gravitation. If I say it roughly, it's puke. God says, you make me want to vomit. Right. And that includes the ministers of America and so many of the churches nowadays. And that's why you can't find any preaching on the coming of the Lord. But he's going to come. And I'll tell you something, preacher, you're not going to get a reward. And you're going to make your people lose all the rewards. Why? Paul could say in 2 Timothy 4, verses 7 and 8, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, your righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them who love his appearing. And if you love his appearing, there's a special crown to lay at the feet of Jesus in Revelation 4, verses 10 and 11. And because of that, you'd better be looking and following Titus 2, 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't you want to see his face? Come on, Pastor, get right with God. Ooh, Jack, every pastor in every pulpit should be putting a positive thing about the coming of the Lord in the hearts of their people. This is wonderful because if you're looking for the coming of the Lord, if you thought he were coming tomorrow, wouldn't you be living for him? We need to be living for the Lord every single day. Jack and I were talking about something entitled the 3,000-year miracle of history. You ever heard of that? It pertains to the Jews as well as to the Gentiles. 3,000 year miracle of history, Jack. And the Christians, Gentiles and Christians. Yes. The rabbis taught their people from Psalm 90 verse four that a day is like 1,000 years in God's eyes. The Christians taught it in Second Peter 3, 8. A day is like 1,000 years, 1,000 years is as a day. Now, there's something exciting I'm about to give you. The word of God and history teach us that in 70 AD, Vespasian and his son Titus, who were Roman generals, marched down to Jerusalem, slaughtered one million of God's chosen people, and they were dragged away into Babylon in one time in 586, and then they were carried to other cities in the Roman Empire, and they were kidnapped from their homeland for almost 2,000 years. Now remember, that's 70 AD. Now here is the miracle text. In Hosea 6, verse 2, he says, after two days, 2,000 years, God will revive us Jews. They became a nation in 1948, almost two days later. And then they add, and the third day, and that's when Christ comes and sets up his millennium for the 1,000 years, he... Christ will raise us Jews up from the dead. And that, of course, is Daniel 12, too. And for the Christians, we've already been raptured, but millions get saved during the tribulation hour. Revelation 7, verse 9, he says, I saw multitudes like no man could number, like the sand of the sea, millions upon millions, 
Who are they? They came out of the great tribulation and washed their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. The greatest revival is going to happen after we're gone, after the rapture. Say, well, all these things were true. And those who died during that time, for they will in Revelation 20, verse 4, for Jesus are raised from the dead. But the point is, after two days, we're going to become a nation again. We're going to revive. It happened. And the third day, he's coming back, and we're going to be raised from the dead. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just passed into the third day of history, and Jesus could come at any time. You're going to get shocked here and excited in a minute. I'm going to put you on the spot here, Jack. If you were sitting here, I think you'd ask him the same question. Do you really think that we could be the generation that would go to meet the Lord in the rapture? I know it, Rex. Now listen now. I'm going to get deep here, but I'm going slowly. In Luke chapter 21, verse 32, and 33, Jesus said, The generation that lives to see all these things shall not perish from the earth. We are the generation that will not die. What things? Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke chapter 17. But the two main things there, as I said just a couple weeks ago, is that Israel became a nation and the Jews took Jerusalem June 5th through 10th, 1967. You got that? Now, where does God begin the countdown? Israel becoming a nation? No, that's been the big mistake. Daniel 9.24 says that the countdown begins when the people who've become a nation now have Jerusalem in their possession. Didn't happen until the Six-Day War in 1967. That Six-Day War, June 5th through 10th. Jerusalem in the hands of Jews. That's Luke 21, 24. When you see Jerusalem in my people's hands, you know that my coming is right at the door. The nation and world that lives to see it shall not pass from the earth. It's happened. Now, the Lord wakened me at 4.45 in the morning and said, you know, you made a video on December 21st, 2012. Did you forget a few years ago when you preached how long a generation was? Yeah. Man, I got out of bed. I said, thank you, Lord. I saw something new about December 21st, 2012. And I'm not setting dates. But, oh, the potential is here. Watch this very carefully. How long is a generation? Some say, well, because of Psalm 9510, it tells how the people of Israel were a burden to the Lord as they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And he said, it was that generation. But that doesn't mean a generation is 40 years like a guy did a number of years ago, 1948, and 40 years is 88, and he's coming, 88 reasons. It didn't happen. They had to have Jerusalem in their control. That's the mark. Now watch it. How long is the generation? Matthew 117. All the days from Abraham to David were 14 generations. And all the days from David to the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And all the days from the carrying away into Babylon until the coming of Christ, 14 generations. 14, 14, 14 is 42 generations. But from what time? From Abraham to Christ, 2,160 years. Now you know what a generation is. Why? When you put 42 into that number, you come out with 52 years. And you got 42 generations to prove it, not just one little verse somewhere. In Luke chapter 3, it has all the big ads. And this one begat the other one, etc. Seventy-seven generations are mentioned from Adam to Christ. 4,000 years. 4,000 divided by 77 comes out to 52 years. Oh, we're excellent now. Oh, What's yeah. the countdown? I say it again, Daniel 9, verse 24. Jerusalem, add 52 to 1967 when they took Jerusalem, comes to 2019. Wait a minute, you got your seven-year period of tribulation there. We've been gone before that started. Seven from 2019 is 2012, right around December 21st. Now, Rexa, I'm not setting a date. No. Oh, it's exciting. Jesus says, you won't know the day and the hour, Matthew 24, 36, but you'll know when it's near, even at the door. I can hear the knock right now, it's that near. 
and it could very easily be December 21st, 2012. But I won't set that date. Now,